Well, let's move on. Let's talk about sanctions. Uh, okay. Jackson brought us there. So let's dive right into it. And uh, let's talk about it. So uh, Jackson mentioned that German inflation nears a 50 year high. So this is yeah, this is the headline, right? So what you have right now is this fracturing in the in, in Germany. And we heard over the weekend from the economic, um, the, uh, the economic minister, I have my notes here somewhere. Ursula von No, 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 oh. no, from Germany. Okay. Um, uh, n not the EU president, um, Germany, um, admitting now that these sanctions aren't working, their food prices skyrocketing German economic, the, the economy minister is Robert Habeck. He said on Sunday, quote, let me get the uh, spectacles out here. He said, quote, after Russia's attack on Ukraine, we saw what can happen when Europe stands united with a view to the summit tomorrow. Let's hope it continues like this, but it's already starting to crumble. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like, and crumble again. I love that this is like German. This is like the German way of like telling you. You know, we have a lot of German friends, and like they come to your house to like, why do you uh, keep your carpet like that? Looks ugly. Why do you do that? You know, it's like he, they're not afraid That's to like, like an extreme generalization. But what you're saying is that <laughs> that this is lacking some warmth. <laughs> How many Germans do you know that are indirect? I'm just going to say that, right? I mean, I think, uh, I, I, you know, the Germans I know are pretty direct. He, it's already starting to crumble. So what they're saying is, and, and Jackson, we were just talking about this, is the 50%, I mean, 50-year uh, 50 high for inflation. I mean, this is enormous. Mm -hmm. Consumer prices surging in Europe, uh, in Europe's top economy. The German statistics uh, has reported another jump in inflation in May as food and energy prices continue to climb. Annual inflation in Europe's top economy has reached 7.9%, the highest level since the 1973 oil crisis. <laughs> Look at that. Soaring energy prices. People are just running out of energy. Uh, like crazy. Another factor with the upward effect on prices is interruptions in supply chains caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the list is endless. I had a chance to uh, earlier today uh, speak with uh, Larry Johnson, who is a uh, uh, former CIA analyst. Uh, he worked at the State Department on their counterterrorism division. We talked about sanctions. Here's what he had to say about sanctions in Russia and how under uh, how, how we basically... Um, couldn't figure couldn't figure this out. We didn't have enough experts to figure out that trying to put these sanctions against Russia was going to totally backfire. Let's listen to Larry. If I can pull up this video, what do you mean? There's there was no economic modeling to tell you what would happen. They, they just couldn't. Yeah, his point That's is bull crap. We, we've, we've had seventy years of this and no one figured this out. Listen, the people who dreamt up the idea that boy we're going to sanction uh, Russia to the Stone Age had no idea or understanding of the economic realities that undergird Russia's economy. Russia is one of the few countries in the world that's self-sufficient. They, you know, if they closed all their people would eat, they would still be able to build advanced machinery. They'd be able to build rocket engines. Uh, you can't say that, you know, Germany doesn't build rocket engines. Spain right. doesn't build rocket engines. So, but they shut it down. But but the other thing that it, beyond this, when you know, I step back and look at it from an analyst point of view, can we cite one example in history, and in the last seventy years, where imposing economic sanctions on a country have produced regime change, political change that have helped the United States achieve its interests? No. The answer to that is not a single case. In fact, so we are sanctioning over over Venezuela right now and then turning around and saying, but we can, or, or no. Yeah, what's yeah, the, what's, what Jackson, what's the uh, definition of insanity? Like, yeah, just keep repeating it over <laughs> Yeah, you know, doing over. the same thing over and over. Right. Different result, expecting a different result. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just insane. I think uh, Wall Street in London seriously underestimated the strength of the Russian economy and the fact that they are, uh, you know, they're a commodity market, right? You have mm -hmm. not just oil, gas, and coal. Uh, you also have lumber, fertilizer, agricultural goods. You have metals. You have raw minerals. You have so much stuff in Russia thinking that you're just going to isolate them. Well, that's not going to hurt them. And then we've also seen, and I'm sure you guys have been talking about this, that uh, Russia's trade exports with China, with India, with Pakistan and BRICS nations have increased dramatically over the past year. And that's not only keeping them afloat, but that's actually increasing the amount of revenue that's being generated by the Russian state right now. So 
they're winning. The ruble's high. The stock market is strong. And I don't see this. I mean, com com uh, production is going to be increasing back to normal rates within the next year, two years. I don't see this going poorly for them. I think this is, at the end of the day, going to help them. Yeah, and it was interesting to hear uh, Ur Ursula Vander's. Uh, I can never say her name right. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen. Von der Leyen. Yeah, she was on with. Um, you know, she has a long history, right? Because I think I've interviewed her a couple of years ago when she was. Uh, I don't remember where the heck I was when I. Anyway, anyway, she was on with MSNBC. She was on with Mika Brzezinski. Now Mika, Mika wore her best Ukrainian scarf. Okay. Which I just started. I couldn't, you know. Um, and so she had her best, uh, she had her best, uh, Ukrainian scarf on when she wanted to know like, well, how does this, you know, how, how, how do these sanctions actually going to help, um, the rest of the world? Like what's going to happen here? Uh, and here's what she had to say. And yes, citizens to dig deep on solutions to some of the world's most pressing problems among them, Russia's aggression in Europe and China's heavy handed approach in Asia. Here's more of my conversation with European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. By the way, she has multiple Ukrainian outfits. So this is she's wearing this blue shirt with a yellow thing. And then she then she has a, a Ukrainian scarf uh, in this second clip here. Okay. I'm going to ask about the sanctions that are taking place because there is a lot of different levels How of sanctions going on from different directions. Um, I mean, EU she's like Lady Gaga. Her fashion is her statement. Billions of dollars of Russian oil and gas. Doesn't that undermine the sanctions from the West and also fuel Putin's war machine? We okay, so before she answers, the predicate is we need to sanction Russian oil, right? We're going to stop using any Russian oil, right? Well, that lasted about like what, five days. So here's now the new move. We have issued now five packages of sanctions. The sixth one is on the table and these sanctions are hitting the Russian economy hard and that's what they have to do. But you're also right. Um, when uh, this war, this uh, invasion started, uh, Europe was heavily dependent on Russian oil, gas and coal. Mm -hmm. We got rid of the coal by now. Uh, we are in the process of winding down uh, the use of oil and we have just issued last week a big uh, package, we call it Repower EU, to get rid of the dependency of Russian gas. Mm -hmm. This is diversifying away from the Russian gas towards reliable suppliers like our friends in the United States. I have an agreement with uh, President Biden on LNG gas, for example, that will replace from next year on, one third of the Russian uh, supply. The second part is energy saving, but the third part is the most important, and this is accelerating the green transition. This is the investment, heavy investment in renewable energy. Oh, okay. So forget like, <laughs> Forget, you know, sanctioning Russian oil in this way. We're, we've, we've now changed course and, uh, and, and we're giving you this big pile of, uh, of, of change here, which Jackson, unpack that for us because it's pretty ridiculous. And I think they have egg on their face, wouldn't you say? <laughs> They're literally just blowing up their entire economies right now. It's, it's astounding to watch. I mean, even the mere rumblings in the six round of sanctions they're trying to push through that Hungary is blocking to place a ban on Russian oil is alone shooting up the price of barrel today to $120 per barrel. And people estimate if they actually do go through with the Russian oil ban in the EU, it could shoot oil prices up to $185, $200, maybe even $300 per barrel. And as for the gas, I mean, they don't have the option of the United States. Joe Biden was lying about being able to you know, fill the void of Russian gas. Even top U.S. Uh, gas CEOs were saying, no, we're not going to be able to do this. There's not enough LNG terminals on either side of the Atlantic. We're already over maximizing our output and we don't have the tankers to send LNG over there right now. So these are long term plans and they need short term solutions to address the potential and probably likely uh, effort by the Russians to break away from Europe before Europe even has the potential to break away from Russia. Russia doesn't want to work with Europe anymore, and they have new partners that they'd be happy to do business with in more preferable currencies as well. Yes. Yeah. And by securing a trade route through the north of the north of Europe across 
um, the Netherlands and Finland, you know, they've been working on this for a long time so that they could secure trade up and through China. Um, and I think that the clip that we played earlier from Zelensky saying, well, I guess this war ends this way if there is a united Western agreement agreement to continue to support us. Um, that is a big if, and you can tell that he knows that that is no longer a given, right? Is that how you read that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as for anything Zelensky says, I just say it's think the exact opposite. He, he's completely delusional and he they have no power. Did you guys see also that they cut off uh, they cut off Russian gas flow into the EU. I think that Zelensky is yes. understanding that he's getting absolutely screwed right now. And he's starting to take it out on the EU and on the broader West. And as long as he continues to do that, I can't imagine that there's going to be an increased amount of support for him and his regime. Yeah, when you when you say F the EU, <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> that never really goes well. When did I, he say that? Well... I mean, his his team through right? actions, the, the, yeah, through yeah. Newland, yeah, yeah, and same with uh, and same with Victoria Newland saying "f the EU," you know, and then they always have to walk this back and apologize for it. I love, by the way, that that video got removed and then replaced, and YouTube stuck it back up. But you know, it's funny because you know they're saying, "Oh, that that didn't really happen. That's a fake phone call." And then, of course, they actually apologized for saying "f f the EU." So, of course, they knew it was real. Of course, they they actually acknowledged that it was a, a legitimate um, a legitimate. Uh, phone call. But I, I wanted to show you this. So this is The Guardian today. As we're talking about sanctions, this is stunning. Almost 500,000 UK small businesses at risk of going bust within weeks. So nothing to see here. <laughs> nothing at all to worry about in, in London. 500,000. But this is reminiscent of the Canadian trucker envoy, right? Is that the government does not want to talk about working class issues. They need bigger wars to deflect. Um, and so, you know, Ukraine is giving them everything they need to deflect from all sorts of internal issues, working class issues, um, the same way that woke politics does. Right. Yeah. Someone in our chat says Shane Cuz says the sanctions have decimated the Russian economy. LOL. Russians are bailing out Sri Lanka. Great work, West. Freeze or starve your people due to ineffective sanctions, you morons. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. That was a good well, I, I find this interesting. I, I, yeah, and, I find and about freezing, that, uh, so Britain uh, is just warning this week that there's going to be rolling blackouts during the winter in their country due to their energy rationing plan that the EU is also embarking on right now because of their effort to uh, curb reliance on Russian energy. So this is coming. It's going to be a very cold winter for lots of Europe. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be civilians that are always hit the hardest, not anyone who's ruling or in governance. Yeah, I saw George Galloway saying, you know, you better get, get out the blankets this winter because it's not going to be good in Europe. Philip, go ahead. Sorry, your, your audio bus wasn't turned on. Yeah, yeah, I think it's I think we're good now. Uh, I was gonna say, I find it interesting that the Europe is so it's like the way I liken it is like they're they're playing baseball with Russia and they decide they don't want to play baseball with Russia, but Russia has all the baseballs and they have all the bats. So the EU's like, we don't want to play with you anymore. I know this is a totally American sport in Europe, but whatever, <laughs> they're playing baseball. And so they're like, they're like, we don't want to play more. So in two to three seasons, once we get our own equipment, you're off the team. You're out of here. You know, and it's <laughs> yeah. just like, that's, that's basically what they're doing. They're like, yeah. They're like, what kind of threat is that? Right. Hey, we're going to keep taking oil from you. We're going to keep taking oil from you for a while, but we're going to set up our green infrastructure. Uh, and so we're going to move towards that. So to make sure all of the, I mean, you know. Meanwhile, most of the solar plant panels that they can invest in are made in China, right? right. And chi which still trades with Russia. So who are we fooling, right? Because no, it's all an end around. And Jackson, you kind of mentioned it earlier through Poland. It's like, we're kind of, yeah, to your point, it's like, we keep going around or we keep we keep playing hide the salami. No, is that the right thing to say? I think that's a dirty analogy. Oh, okay. We keep playing uh, <laughs> Lucy picks at the football. I get the reference. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with hide the salami. I like that. <laughs> we keep we keep trying to pretend like, okay, if we don't get it directly from them, but we're really actually getting it from someone who's still do, doing business with you anyway. You're doing a reach around, which do, yeah. is a dirty analogy. We're doing a reach around and we're playing hide the salami. <laughs> I'm going. Yeah, yeah no, it, you just went dirty it, it, exactly. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, Europe doesn't have any other options. I mean, where do they think they're going to get their their 
resources to keep their economy afloat, their industries running right there, their residential buildings uh, heated. I, they can't get this anywhere but Russia. And a lot of their raw materials that they're trying to, you know, embark upon this green, you know, deindustrialization plan with, as you said, come from China. They've completely screwed themselves. And it's just, again, so fascinating to watch these leaders in Germany in particular run down this path when it's so, so simple to see, even from like a, a layman observer, that this is going to tear their country apart. Exactly. Yeah. This is where I will restrain myself from talking about self-sufficiency and living off the grid. I'm just going to. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I see. They, they're like, Natalie, can you just. Uh, I can't help it. Tell us all to go buy chickens. We, we all have to have a goat. Like, Natalie, we don't have land. How are we going to get a goat? We you don't have get room a worm for a compost chicken. We don't in have your a apartment. Yeah, not everyone has. We live in a high rise and we don't even have. Yeah, we're not going to get a goat. We don't have a garden. Okay. But not I'm enough. going to just end this with however it is that you're in, you know, that you are dependent on your government or the food supply system. It's a good time to rethink it. No, I, I will say that. Absolutely. And I think, you know, uh, Christine Austin Fitz talks about that. It's like, you got to get away from reliance on these governments. You know, the Gies governments are telling, you know, these governments are telling you like, yeah, move to a digital currency. Let us control everything with your vaccine passports on and on and on. And, you know, they tell us even like cash is dirty. It's got COVID on it. Don't touch paper. It's like, no, no, no. Wait a second. Really? Maybe take a step back here. Maybe I want to start using the cash again because I don't want you controlling everything that I do. Yes. Right. So, yeah, there's an idea for you. Uh, did, Jackson, did you catch COVID from uh, ca cash when you were touching coins? Did you get? I don't know. I caught, caught COVID a few times, but I don't know. It may have been from cash. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> right. Because you were licking all that cash and that's how we know that that's how. It, yeah. <laughs> right after I lick, right after I licked the bathroom floors, I licked the cash. <laughs> right. That's what we all do. Yeah. There you go. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned. We've been blocked. We've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.